Hello and welcome back to the channel. Uh, well, we're finally back from holiday. It's the first clear night we've had uh, on a weekend where I can uh, actually do some form of um, imaging. Unfortunately, it happens to be during the middle of a heat wave and we've got the full moon as well. Perfect. Um, but nevertheless, we'll, we'll, we'll crack on and try. So we're going to have a go at uh, the Vale Nebula, also known as the Witch's Broom. I'll come back to Ars the Astro. What time did you say you, you can image from again? Midnight. Jeez Louise. is Amber chilling in the garden getting ready for all the excitement so here is the rig all set up and ready to go um, we have actually got a thermometer which sits on the um, Gemini focuser uh, if you want me to do a bit more of an in-depth on the focuser let me know I, I can do a, a video on that um, well, the thermometer would be quite useful because it'll tell how cool, how cold we can get the camera. I'm trying to do about minus 25, uh, it can do minus 25 degrees. So um, if it's 20 degrees, we can get it to minus five. I'd be, I'd be happy with that. But it has been 30 degrees today, so we'll, we'll, we'll have to see. Um, usual guide camera, and that's not changed. Um, you've got the uh, plate on the back there still. Um, same M15 mounts, and as you saw from the last video, we're trying to go mobile a little bit. So we've got a Melee uh, Mini PC sat on top. That's uh, going to drive the rig. And then below, we've got a VT Omen uh, Flash Speed 600 uh, power station, which should power the whole thing for about 10 hours. But we only need about three tonight because that's all the um, not quite dark we get because it doesn't actually get fully dark um, there's no astronomical dark at the moment the only thing we get is um, nautical dark so we'll see what we can do because we are filming a nebula tonight uh, we're going to stick with the SV Bonnet SV220 dual narrowband filter give that one a whirl um, I have just got a UV IR filter um, which we can try and do uh, another galaxy maybe next or, or, or something else. We'll see what, what, what comes up. I do want to get the Andromeda galaxy, but that's going to be a, a, a mosaic. So I think that will become uh, quite quite a good one. So it's about 10.30. The sun's <clears throat> just about set now. Um, this is one of the issues I do have uh, next door. I've got a quite a bright um, security light out, out front. Um, which, if it turns on, does interfere. Uh, hopefully, we don't have too much of that. You know, when, the, when the dogs come out, the dogs come out and they trigger that light. Um, it doesn't stay on for very long, though, so hopefully we'll be okay. And I think we are pointing away from it slightly, so that's, that's okay. But as you can see, my partner likes to light the garden up with as much light as possible. Which for us is an astrophotographer. There's another bright uh, light over there, which we need to turn off. Fortunately, I can turn all these off, but uh, what my partner likes to uh, bring to the party, so to speak. Even though I'm in a um, bottle six for light pollution, it does actually get quite dark around the back here. See the. A little bit of the sunset still to go. So we are now all powered up. PC is just powered up on top. Uh, the mount is powered up. Uh, there's a couple of things we need to do. We need to um, just make sure that it's in the home position. The telescope's in the home position. Uh, once we've checked that, so then we need to do some polar alignment. So we have enough to plate it all ready for polar alignment. So 
this point we can hit next because it said breaks out before rotating our A axis. We press next. Now we can rotate the RA. You can see how far our, our polar alignment is. Right, we are currently 34 minutes, so try and get that in corrected. So we're way too high. And we're, we're within a minute, so that's that's good enough for what, for what we need. Excellent. So we need to go outside now. We can go inside and uh, start prepping for imaging. Okay, so we are now inside. Um, that stuff is down there. Just finished polar aligning. Got within a minute. It's good enough for us. Don't need sharp cap again uh, now, so we can close sharp cap. What we need to do is open up Nina. And we'll put PhD2 while we're here. First thing we want to do is just connect some equipment. So we want to connect the SV Boney, connect our focuser. Hopefully it should connect. Yep. Connect the mount. This will automatically launch the um, Electron Commander Panel. And we also need uh, the guider, so we'll connect that as well. We can look on the focuser, 1925, so that's not, it's not too bad actually. I think we should be alright for cooling for that, so let's just start cooling this camera down. We'll try it to minus 5, uh, it should be okay. And then we want to try and find our uh, Objects I want for tonight. So today we're going to have a look for Coldwell 34, and if we set that to the framing assistant, we should get a pretty picture of what is there. If we slew and centre that. So it looks like we had a camera problem there, where it was image taking an image but not actually uh, retrieving it from the camera. So that's the first time I've ever had that. So that's an unusual one. Excellent. So it's fluid sensor now, so we can determine camera rotation. I want to be a little bit more there. I'm going to add this to a target sequence. I'm going to use 300 seconds, and this will load up our default. So. Nautical Dawn is when we want to finish, which is at 2.36 and 47 a.m. Um, I believe we're still cooling the camera. Here it comes cooling again. Um, so, what we want to do is, let's add a basic sequence startup. We'll put a basic sequence end on as well. We can delete the annotation because we don't need that. We're going to cool it down to minus 5 anyway, and we don't need some park, so we just need the cooling to, to happen. So, target's going to be um, Caldwell 34. Um, we are going to um, slow and center, start the guiding, not going to calibrate, we're going to run an autofocus, Meridian flips configured. We're going to do that after every five exposures. Uh, autofocus um, when it's, it goes outside of 5%. And we're going to take 300 second light frames until astronomical dawn. That's all we really need for that one. And then the end sequence, we'll get rid of these annotations. Um, we do want to warm the camera. We don't want to park the scope because, uh, but what we can do is uh, we can find home that's fine we don't bother that we don't bother that and that is in essence our sequence complete now we are a little early for starting to image but i think that's good enough for what we need so we can hit play this the uh, the autofocuser the gemini one considering it's so cheap it works excellently 
I don't think I've ever had the hyperbolic outside of 0 0.98 I think it's always been within um, unless it's become cloudy if it's become cloudy then it's uh, yeah, obviously it's going to struggle but uh, yeah 0 0.98 has always been pretty good he says when the autofocuser fails <laughs> Okay, I'll look at what the um, autofocus um, issue was a little later because at the minute um, we're getting a HFR of 1.92 which is what I usually get for this anyway so um, we'll have a look but that's our first, first subframe of the Witch's Broom coming through it looks pretty good got a bit of a satellite trail through it but uh, that looks okay for me so uh, we can leave this chugging along now and uh, we'll come back to it in a couple of hours and see what we've got. Here we go. Uh, this is, the, I think, it's the third exposure in, and we've managed to get one without uh, star trails through it. But it looks pretty good, even from the uh, preset inside uh, inside Nina. Okay, we'll leave this for uh, a couple of hours. See how many subs we can we can get, and we will uh, take it from there. Okay, it's now the following day. Uh, we managed to grab uh, 36 5 minutes sub exposures um, of uh, Cobalt 34 or the Veil Nebula. Uh, here they all are, are here. So I think it's just time to quickly process it together. Um, focus was reasonably good. Uh, it did do a refocus, um, and that one actually worked, although there was a bit of a glitch on it on the end. I need to figure out what's going on with that, uh, and I will look at that at a. Uh, another day. I mean, it, it might be clear enough tonight to be able to kind of fiddle with it, but uh, any time you are testing, you are not imaging. So, uh, but we'll we'll see what we can do. Um, but yeah, we got the thirty-six uh, five minutes of frames. So about three hours in, in total. We actually kind of started before it really got dark enough. So, I think the first thing we want to do is I've brought up Seti Astro, uh, but the only thing I want to really use is the blink comparator. So if I select the directory that is, I've put everything in for the lights. So it's currently loading those uh, images up. And then what we can do, we can just flick through them. We can look for anything that, anything that's got star trails in. Uh, and we can look for ones which are a little bit too bright. Um, and we can just remove those from the stack. Um, obviously we've only got 36 images to play with, so we don't want to cull too many, but uh, sometimes you can be a little bit too too brutal with it, but let's see, let's see what shows up. I think if we just take out those first two, because those are the ones with the most prominent. Um, and all we can do is we can just delete them. I've got backup copies of them anyway, so we can just delete them from here, and then uh, if we want to pull them back in, we can do later. Excellent. So that's all we need. Uh, Such astro for we can close that now. Uh, yep, we want to check it now. We're now on serial 1.4 beta 3. It was literally updated yesterday, uh, so I've downloaded that ready for in, uh, processing this this image today. So we're not going to do anything special or different to how we do it before. So I will quickly go go through this. Um, in fact, you don't need me to talk through it. So let me disable the camera for now.
there we go. Well, that is our, our processed image. Um, I added an extra background extraction just before the colour stretch, just to get rid of a um, bit of what well, looks like glow around around the edges. Um, but that seems to have cleaned cleaned that up nicely. And uh, I think that's a very very good image. So yeah, this is um, the West Vale Nebula, uh, <coughs> also known as the Witch's Broom. Um, it's about 2,400 light years away from us, and it's the remnants of a supernova in the constellation Cygnus. So I think we'll leave it there, and uh, thanks very much for uh, always watching. Please do all the YouTube you like and subscribe. Uh, it really does help uh, help me out. And uh, we will see you in the next one.